Welcome to part 5, the finale of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles The Adventure of the Great Departure. Ryunosuke is no match for the cold, calculating, and conniving woman Giselle Brett. After hitting him with the one 2 your flies down punch, Ryu struggles to find any way to get a leg up on her. That is until Deus Ex Woman appears with Brett's research on the correctly pronounced Kurari, a deadly poison that causes paralysis then death. Brett gets thirsty, Kazuma gets constipated, and Ryo gets fiercely pointy. He realizes that the poison killed the professor due to his extracted tooth. Everything is looking up for Ryo when Brett yoinks the poisonous bottle and destroys it before the police have a chance to examine it. With Ryu's only evidence against Brett destroyed, he uses the power of picture restoration to remember that there was blood on Brett's steak. Luckily, our somewhat psychotic crime scene thief recovered everyone's food from the crime scene. It's time to find out if Ryu was correct. Will he finally prove his innocence? Find out on... <coughs> Sorry for the delay. Here is what you ordered. The steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't! Quickly, Inspector. The blood man! Show the court! Of course. Examine the plate at your leisure. There's no blood! No. No blood. No blood anywhere. But... but no, that's... IMPOSSIBLE! You know I saw it, I'm sure of it! It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate! <laughs> what an unbecoming expression, little boy! You see, this is why I always say you they can't trust what the Japanese tell you. The huh. I couldn't agree more. In the case of this disgrace to the Empire. I believe we may finally have reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget all about when it's over. Uh... Nah, this sorry-looking steak reveals the facts all too clearly. If the sorry-looking accused wishes to examine it again, be my guest. I would like to examine it. Alright. It's the plate I saw. I thought I saw. Just a figment of my imagination. This is it now. I've lost. Rinosuke. It's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Huh. Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward, no matter what. Believe in myself? Really? Maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. Or is the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to be problematic in any way. I presume any further examination of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objection? That bloodstain was going to clinch the trial for me. Can this play of stake reveal any other clues at all? Well, let's examine it, shall we? Alright, there's nothing on the back. Alright, there's two things to investigate here. The stake. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. What? I'm sorry. That's a great. That's a. What? I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. What? You tell me that the old man's coin is under the stake. That's. What a Chekhov's gun, huh? Huh? What the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Koban coin. And the hallmark is from the Hoei era, I believe. No, no, I don't mean what is it. I mean, what's it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a Hoei Koban? <gasps> it's the wrong steak! Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. 
Huh. This isn't the first time today that there's been talk of a Hoei Koban. I've heard of pearls before swine, but I've never heard of bullion and boolean. <laughs> I don't know what either of those words mean. And I don't think you ever will again. This is extraordinary, though. This means... I know what this means, but I do want to investigate this. This emblem on the side of the plate. Is it a cat? It's a cow. Obviously. Most likely because the restaurant's signature dish is beef steak. It seems a lot of different restaurants have their own unique tableware. So this is the symbol of La Carnival, is it? I have my evidence! There's another clue! Your Excellency, please wait! This play of beef is hiding another clue! Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth! Attention! The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beef steak. Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel for the defense, you will now clearly show the court to what you are alluding. Where precisely on this plate of beefsteak is this new clue to be found? Well, it, it's under this. It's under this. Ah, uh, there it is. Got it. Good, good gracious, that's. Ah, ah. Koban? What on earth? A Hoei era one at that. Miss Brett, this is in fact the beef steak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me, why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? Shut up! What a ridiculous question! How should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life! I don't know what this is, but I want to know part of it. Attention! I fail to see how this is relevant. A coin under the meat? That could simply have been a careless mistake by the chef in a moment of distraction. Objection! Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe that this happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare Hoei Koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case. I'll rip up my ticket to Great Britain right now. He's right. It can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Rare scoundrel. A rare Hoei Koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. Objection! By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. Shut up! Perhaps, little boy, you should realize that it is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here? The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what it's doing under that stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the Koban that was found underneath the beefsteak is... Uh, this guy. Oh, hello. The judicial assistant defense lawyer, Kazuma Sogi. Take that! It's that guy. Obviously, it can only be... The antique stealer and owner of Rasutai, Kyrio Kurakuda-san. Kyuri? As in... Mr. Cucumber something? Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. Ah, uh, yes. The old man who testified earlier alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Koban coin when it happened. At exactly the moment the gun was fired.
then this whole era cobra. Do you mean to tell me? Objection! No, 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 please, why would Korakuda-san's Koban be sandwiched between the victim's beef steak and his plate? It makes no sense. Yes! Which is why I'm asking to bring Korakuda-san back to the witness stand so we can ask him. Officer, bring both witnesses that testified earlier back in here. Without a moment's delay. I can't believe we've come back around to that pair again. But I have a hunch. A strong hunch. And if we chase down the real significance of this Koban, we'll find that it's a key element in the case. Okay, maybe it's the right stake. There's all four of them. How big is this witness stand? Oh my gosh. What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Don't you realize that it's dinner time for little baby Edo? When my son's belly is empty, he's fiercer than a pack of wolves! Exploited by the police, we were like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom, myself, I became a ruined man in a trice, a worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I to say. The sun is set on this Rasute shop owner's experience. Be that as it may, Gorakuda-san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasute memory serves, have you ever seen this go- <laughs> That's- Yes! That's it! The one! The very one! The very exact one that it is! The resplendent, splendiferous hoey treasure that by rusty bones mentioned is misplaced that fateful day! It can't be. Hmm, as I thought. Young man! Enlighten this decrepit old fool! Put me out of my misery! Where? Where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um... I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between a beef steak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat's juices. s s sandwich s s soaking s s seriously Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my whole treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate? Who would do such a thing? Such an unconscionable thing! Excuse me. Could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Osanaga. I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but... The incidents! I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm, wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in undercover, is it? Yes, I took on the job of waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm. So unbeknownst to us, there is a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid K Korakuda san's Koban is all too clear. What? It is? <laughs> what? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us, who is this despicable scoundrel that stole Korakuda-san's Koban and hid it under the stake? Wait, how am I supposed to know? Wait, 
Wait, no, I have no evidence. It's either the lady or it's Ayesinosa. I don't know if anyone's like a regular. <laughs> I don't think it was John H. Wilson. Well, she she seemed very confused when she saw it. And she was busy she was busy murdering someone. I don't think she did two birds, one stone. Ayesinosa, it was you. Take that! Obviously. It can only be you. Sergeant Ayesinosa! How? Oh, how dare you! You, you, you monster! Monster? I stole that Copan, did I? I'm the master thief of Laconaval, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet? But it wasn't me, it was Ido! Ido is the mastermind behind all of this! Well, I guess I was somewhat right earlier when I said the baby stole the coin. <laughs> um. Uh, you would push the blame for your crimes into your own son, an innocent little baby? It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. The baby just killed him. The baby just killed him. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> Nippon Imperial Army, Sergeant Ayasinosa, preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir! Do any of you know of the extraordinarily low wages the Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place. And I have heard it's hard for lower ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son! That's why you're selling things at the restaurant. The place is heaving with money! Every three days I'd go there and do reconnaissance for a target! And I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. Sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork even, which is worryingly believable. And your target that day was the old man in his Koban. Yes, sir. He, he was an easy mark. I slipped the coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Oh, a veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the steak I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. Hido, too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could. On the double! I slipped it under the steak. Hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. Why did you prance around like a horse? Did no is no one gonna ask that? Hmm. Hmm. This is ridiculous. That's my prediction. There we go. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How oh, rude of us. I'm quite sure that there's no need to detain you any longer at all. May this steam, gentlewoman, please be excused, your excellency. Mm, indeed. The theft of the Koban was clearly perpetrated by this baby-saddled sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. N nonsense, is it? Uh, um, well... Uh... And 
Fernandez for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. It's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. You better object right now, Ryanosuke. There's that face. You just thought of something. Ryanosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. Oh, was it her describing that the steak was eaten quite differently from hers? I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. I didn't say that out loud, Kazuma. You're not allowed to know that. Sorry? You can think later. But if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid. Just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryunosuke? Yes, I'm right. But she said they're exposing an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where's the evidence to prove it? All right, well, it's got to be the, pic the picture of the steak, right? Yeah. If she ate it with a knife and fork, then why? That is some raw, raw, <laughs> that is some raw dogging right there. All right. Take that! Photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed, yes? Go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just splitting hairs! Not true. Doesn't something about the steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shapes of the edges where it's been eaten. Oh. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed. No Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did, as she's a refined English gentlewoman herself. And then take a good look at this steak, in particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Ah! Oh. <sighs> Looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Objection! But, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravishly hungry at. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. With this heard, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. <laughs> I've heard enough. You irritating little speckled samurai relic. Of, of course, dear lady. 
And what's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? That's funny, because your hat is a live swan. Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She's realized the catastrophic implications the teeth marks in the stake have for her. Ryunosuke, do you know where you're going with this? Yes. Now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in a steak that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the bloodstain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks in the stake were a little unnatural, as you put it, Council. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Shut up! Conclusive evidence. How many times have I heard that today? You wanted to know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been... what? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, it doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. Objection! This is absurd! The trial has run several hours already, and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward? There can't be. I don't believe you have it. Objection! I don't, but there's someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. Huh. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? I mean, the guy who took the stakes, hopefully. Take that! The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosonaga. What? I... I have it? Yes. You... you think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous! <coughs> no, no, no! I'm not saying that! Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes? Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoyed chomping my way through a good steak. And as well as admitting to stealing Korakuta-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the steak. You... you watch it, cadet! I'm a superior officer! Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the steak that you put the coin under... In fact, your own steak? Tension! Affirmative! Of course! I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still... I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the steak that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. Objection! But that makes no sense. That play was taken from the victim's table. Objection! Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her steak, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. Clearly you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over. <laughs> uh oh, you did switch the plates! <laughs> well, after it happened, the. Um. 
when I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hit the coin underneath it. But then when the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I had it. So if he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested to take it off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my stick with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have... I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. <laughs> there was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Unbelievable! However, fear not, prosecutor son. What now? I swear on the brass buns of my uniform. That is all I did, sir. All you did, that's plenty, sergeant. Yes! So, if sergeant knows to switch the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's steak, and the plate it was on, back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosodaga. Yes? Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's stake after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah! Huh. <laughs> That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot! Shut up! What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat. It can't have the slightest bearing on the case. Objection! No, you're not wriggling your way out of it this time, lady. Oh, I, I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? Huh. You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. D thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear spattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defense memory serves him well. <sighs> and now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you're eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. There it is, do the blood! Here's the other steak and its plate. Please, feel free to examine it. Perfectly cut! Blood everywhere! The blood stain. It's clearly visible, look! Yes! Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for a Naruhodo-san to have shot the victim. Ah! It, it can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Ah! Uh. That's right. Miss Giselle Brett. It's you! Oh. Oops, Swan's just dead. Outdone by a Japanese. Me, by a Japanese schoolboy. No, no, no! 
<laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it's what the what the? <laughs> oh, she's she's dead. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for coming. Aw, there's baby birds everywhere now. <laughs> what a strange game. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett. I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life, using cure -air. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison will be found in his water. Because cure is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water, and it would all be over. I would place the steak I'd order in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point. So I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of cure in my handbag. And... My own pistol concealed under my skirt. Uh, under your skirt? So I was right. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. A place where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun, as I'd intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up... That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Naruhodo-san was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because of course. You needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Your Excellency. 
Yes? I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day, then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodo-san. I'm sorry, she just she just said she she murdered she she committed murder. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in an agreement. This, this can't be. Dr. Sujiochi does not lose. Not to the likes of this this rookie student. You'd better start getting used to tough opposition. Ah, Ryanosuke Naruhodo. What? Yes? This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten. You've become conceited with age, Council. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. <laughs> he just assaulted the prosecution in the courtroom. A thousand millennia may pass, and still, the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryunosuke Naruhodo, presented an excellent case. I thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Sogi. Yes? After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Ah, uh, never mind. As for you, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Oh, yes? In you, I sense, how can I put it, unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Not. Guilty! You are not the father! Yippee! Yippee! Wee! Yippee! There's no one in the stands. Who's cheering? <laughs> this court is now adjourned. Twenty second of November, two forty six p.m. Supreme Court of Judicature. Defendants. Anti-chamber. Five. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Ryonosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. Ha 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 No, no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra-large sukiyaki from the place on Yume University Street. Don't forget. 
good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Nope, oh, nope, it was the girl. <laughs> Damn it! I guessed wrong. Congratulations to both of you for proving Naruhoto-san's innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do any. Thank you so much! If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Brett's, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, uh, yes, of course. The last names were the same and you were standing next to him, but I, n I had never put it together until now. Speaking of Mikotoba. Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you, after all. Your efforts expose the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He wanted to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides... It's your turn, Asogi. Huh. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword at Great Britain, are you? You'll never get through customs. Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, uh, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future. For Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Huh. Rizzo Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hosanaga! It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate- But- But what's all this about consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then who? Who's going to bring her to justice? Our British consular court will hear her case. Some are far away where our voices can't be heard. But why consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, they can't involve a consular court just like that, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our governments making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. Hmm. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student. 
Day's trial was nothing more than a game of luck. There is never any danger of comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make a change. This is a time of great turmoil, this new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. This is definitely foreshadowing and she will appear in a later case. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. For Professor, I'm underaged! You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryunosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest the Carnival? What a traumatic place to bring you all back to! As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. You're... I guess you didn't die in this case, Osanaga, but you're... you're gonna die later. Um, you're a detective, Osanaga-san. Aren't you? <coughs> Let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnival! Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course. La Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Naruhodo-san's release. Oh yes, thank you. So Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I, I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Yeah, I was gonna say, we never found out her motive. Hmm. Kazuma. Yes, Ryunosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. Ha 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 ha! I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Huh? To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. Well, come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat? I never want to go through that ever again. I just... I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do, you, what do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Rinosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? Hmm. No. The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you chose to believe in even then. Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm, believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stop believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stop looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it, through your own efforts, and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryunosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. 
something very important to me. Sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Osanaga, this is terrible timing. How about you leave right now? I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. What's a rickshaw? Let's pick up this conversation again later. No! We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study toward a great brain, don't forget. Ah, uh, yes. That too. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikotoba. He was there for like five seconds. Sato-san, who acted as my assistant for five minutes as well. Inspector Hosanaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still... <laughs> it was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. And more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. Dum bum 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 and yippee! Hooray! Hooray! I don't defense debut. I got a award. That was that was quite the that was quite the adventure we all just had there. I hope you found that case enjoyable. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye 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 bye.